Good morning. Good afternoon. Depends on where you are. I'm Jessica from Milesite Marketing Department. Today, from the IoT security point of view, we will be looking over accessing remote networks by cellular communications and VPN connections. Well, just to give you an overview of this webinar, a very quick introduction to Milesite. Uh, what Milesite is. And then dig into the IoT security challenges when we deploy the cellular router in that infrastructure for the remote access and the data transmission. As we all know, when a connected device such as PLC, IP camera, or a controller at the edge, if we take use of the public available cellular networks to move data from the edge to the cloud, data and the infrastructure itself can be vulnerable to malicious behaviors. So, how can we protect the IoT security for this remote operation? So, let's see how Milesite do it. How we make it with virtual private network, cellular communication, and finally, how to make it all work in the IoT deployment. About Milesite. Milesite, we are an um, end-to-end IoT solution provider. And when I say what we do is we start from the sensory device. We build hardware devices with all sorts of routers, sensors, gateways that correspond to the applications that our customers are active in. We build all that on top of the cellular 4G, 5G network, and LP1 technology like LoLa and MBIoT. We have a very strong r d team with more than 200 experienced engineers. We have got 10 years of experience with surveillance. And I must say that the experience has been a very effective experience. And Milesite brand is a very well-known brand in the video surveillance market. And now we are deep diving into the AIoT industry with our artificial intelligent enhanced wireless products. And our customers are active in different areas, such as in the factory automation, building automation, office workplace monitoring, but also in the smart agriculture, um, smart manufacturing, and smart city. Okay, get back to our main topic today about uh, what is about remote access. Well, remote access is pretty clear. What you want to do is connect to a server, connect to a computer that is back in your office or back in your home, but you want to do it remotely. So when we speak about remote access, we are talking about get reach to any sort of network device that is out of the edge network. And remote access means that you are going to somehow dial in or plug into the computer that you are going to be using and dial-up remote access was emerging as one of the most cost-effective and flexible solutions available in 1999, more than 20 years ago. And this is the most common basic type of connection available uh, from the Internet server providers. And in dial-up connection, you use your computer, um, dial phone number that provided by the ISP through the modem to get connected to a server at the provider's end, and through which you get, um, you get access into the internet. It requires only plain old telephone service, like the POTS or the ISDN lines, and allows uh, users to make connections to many resources uh, from the corporate headquarters to the internet. And obviously, uh, there are, uh, came out of a lot of disadvantages, uh, a lot of limitations. Your phone line is occupied when you are connected to the internet. Sometimes you may get a busy signal when calling the access numbers. 
and only one application can be used at a time. You are not able to have multiple applications around over the same line. The data transmission rate is rather low, and with a rate of 60 uh, kilobits per second or even less, you will have a hard time if you want to download、um, larger data. But I think this is still much better than sending an engineer to the site. An industrial IoT field, the industrial IoT field, we relate on the dedicated list line. We relate on, the,、um, relate on the analog dial-up and the CSD、uh, over GSM technology. I mean the circuit switch the data over GSM technology for the serial communication. But you know, however,、um, nowadays. As we go away from analog communication to digital communication, these list lines are being turned off, or the phone providers no longer offer their lines. Stop providing those lines, and moreover, the existing modem technology is out of date because these signals are being turned off, and the bandwidth requirements are only going up. It means more and more data are being required from the remote site back to the headquarters. So things are becoming smarter. What's the trend? Well, we use the internet as our new access media. Of course,、uh, you cannot run the internet signal over the telephone line. But now everywhere there is access to the internet, so we can pass data over the internet. Even the telephone signals, like the、um, voice over internet, the VoIP technology is made is well developed. You know, is a major technology nowadays. By the way, so rather than use the modems, now we are moving onto routers. In terms of the list lines, now we have to use VPNs that will keep our data secure and safe as travel over the internet. A VPN service basically exists in cloud. So rather than have to buy a very expensive VPN aggregator, we put VPN in the cloud. It enables users to securely access a company's applications or access the company's data and the files in cloud through a website or through a desktop or through a mobile application. So that is what we are looking for at the remote access. So why do we do remote access? Remote access can bring many benefits. From lowering the costs to increasing the workers' satisfaction and productivity, it doesn't cost many dollars. You know, you don't have to send somebody across the country just to look at the serial PLC. Why it doesn't work, and you save time.、Uh, you save time. You save money rather than find people out. You can reduce the cost for support. And more efficient use of time and resources in much quicker response in any system outages or any problems you can see on PLC remotely, and you can offer the preventive maintenance for your end customers. So end customers doesn't necessarily、uh, have controller network, doesn't have engineers to run that network. So you can run that、uh, for your. And customers using the remote VPN services. And we did mention virtual private networks VPN on previous slides. So to dig into exactly what VPN is, how it works, it will take some time. By the way,、uh, because VPN is a complicated but Um, very simple and very useful service. Well, VPN, for instance, the virtual private network is really just a pipeline, a private pipeline within the public network.
it secures everything that is transmitted through that pipe, and that means that everything that you do on your device, both at the at the end where you start and the end where you come out of that virtual private pipe, that virtual private network is encrypted. Some people may know that if you use a VPN to connect to another country, you can connect to resources that are in that country because it makes it look like you are coming from what, wherever that country is. But in this case, uh, you would be using it for your office. You so you would be connecting to a virtual private network client um, sitting on your computer in your office. Onto virtual private network hardware that is in your office. Obviously, when we transmitting data that could be critical and private, we don't want people to see it. We need that security, and that is what VPN offers. And several different ways we can build a VPN. We can build side-to-side -side VPN. Two static offices are able to talk to each other. It keeps data encrypted between two locations without needing、uh, credentials or client apps on device using it. Or we can create remote access VPN. It's typically a consumer-grade VPN. So, the individual hosts, such as your laptop, your cell phone, at remote site,、um, they are able to access the network as well. And have you made sure all the data is private? We encrypted all the data going through the VPN. It's similar like in a meeting room. You want to speak with someone else in private, then you two speak in Chinese. No one can understand what you said. So VPN is encrypted data into completely meaningless code. And also. Um, is entirely virtual because it's all built over the existing infrastructure of the internet. We don't need to build the least lines. We don't need to run、um, the long, expensive fiber cable from point to point, which costs a lot of money. Now, when I mentioned real time, I mentioned VPN. Is the real-time connection that is opposed to the asynchronous communication? For example, if you send an email,、um, send an email is、uh, asynchronous communication, and VPN is real-time. And we support many protocols: OpenVPN, which is SSL-based VPN, and IPsec. OpenVPN supports layer four UDP and TCP protocols. And IPsec obviously is on the layer three. It's about IP packets. And disadvantages to both of them: we support both. You can choose to use one service or the other. IPsec is relatively good support, performing the general、uh, access standard across the board. And OpenVPN is also widespread support. It's much easier to set up. And there are many ways in which VPN can be used, such as Open VPN, PPTP, L2TP, and IPsec. And below we highlight the three most commonly used VPN architectures. So in this example, the VPN traverses fully from the edge to the cloud. Usually, with the device at the edge,、uh, should be running a VPN client, and the application server should hosting a VPN server for termination of the VPN connection. In this example, it's not rely on the same provider to work this application, except the chosen VPN type allowed to traverse the operator's application,、uh, operator's APN. I mean. And when you deploy this type of connection in the field, generally you need to use a VPN application just in front of the application server. And many things at edge cannot work as a VPN endpoint, such as the IS232 device. So the next option might be more helpful in this situation if you need、mm, 
if you need S232, S485 devices. Uh, by the way, uh, uh, APN uh, is mostly a concept, but is a route that your IoT data will take every day. So simply to understand APN uh, is a gatekeeper to the internet and to other networks reachable through the internet. It's responsible for your IP address uh, aggregation, whether fixed or static. And a router to, uh, to cloud the VPN. In this example, the VPN traverses from the router to application server or VPN uh, appliance in the cloud, which is more logical use of resources than the end-to-end -end example. Although data going across the cable from the things to the router is not covered by VPN, but you can do something else to against the security risk. You can implement application layer security instead of VPN also. So the router to cloud VPN is widely used for some applications, uh, except the medical or military projects. Except for these two types of uh, applications, I think, in most normal ca commercial cases, uh, the router to cloud VPN is widely used. In the same provider VPN, this type of service is commonly offered by the mobile version network operator who want to enhance their service offering to the customers and take on more of the solution in return for just a, a small money, a small cost. And in most cases, an IPsec VPN tunnel needs to be built between the same provider's APN and customer's uh, VPN uh, appliance or VPN server. So two IPsecs can be set up for resilience but at the same time, you need, to, uh, you need to understand or you need to bear the additional complexity in the architecture. So it's more, a little bit more complicated um, to, to manage and to set up. Okay, hopefully that have covered everything about VPN at a very entry level and to get in more and more to VPNs. Some considerations of cellular networks, how they impact our remote access. As I mentioned, we are going to be using cellular networks in this very remote area to access the internet with, with the VPN service. Because we don't need to get a fiber cable or to get a couple of internet cables to get connected to a very remote site, we might can go a cellular network. And with more IoT devices on cellular networks, uh, cyber criminals, um, they launch attacks more effectively than ever before. So there, are more, um, there should be more worried about cyber security. We need to pay more attention on this aspect. And the firewalls are imperative, you know. We need to know that there is going to be no unauthorized or unknown access to the network through the cellular modem. So either the cellular modem should have a built-in firewall or should be connected directly to a firewall, possibly both if needed. And VPN should be configured to ensure any data going outside through that cellular router should be encrypted as a path through the internet. And VLANs, you know, VLANs can be configured on the cellular router access to the internet. So you have a separate VLAN within the network itself for the cellular router to sit on. When dealing with the cellular router, we should be treating it very entirely controlled. So that way, no unknown access over the internet. And first part of your security journey 
is about your SIM card. Make sure that your SIM card has a private IP address, not a public one. And you can check with your SIM card provider about the penetration test on their network. And also check if they can lock down the SIM card by the TAC code, by the tech code, um, to make sure that your data is being well protected. For example, when a SIM card is lost but not barred, it could bring a th bring some troubles or bring a, a threat of data or the voice traffic uh, additional charges if someone uses your um, SIM card. And with the right choice of SIM, attacks from the one side um, of the router are much less. So we can turn our attention to the physical security. So you can configure uh, alert either in the mile site device hub central management platform uh, or directly from the router by SMS or email. So uh, administrator can get alert and make response when internet cable has been unplugged, for, for example. And the most effective way to secure Wi-Fi uh, is not to use it. Well, if you really need Wi-Fi, make sure the WPA security is used as a minimum. You know. Please disable the SSID broadcast in the router AP. Um, it can be a smart way to enhance the security as well. Okay, next we got over why we need uh, access remote network. We got over how to get that remote access securely, safely with VPNs. So next, uh, let's check uh, what my site can offer you. Well, uh, we provide this service called MileSite VPN. This is VPN algorithm service. This will allow you to access remote devices over the internet through MileSite VPN. Or you will have a remote location. Uh, for example, engineer's cell phone or engineer's laptop connect to the internet. Go access the VPN through the MileSite VPN. We will be able to access the remote location that access the internet through the cellular router. And besides that, remote devices access each other of a mouse site VPN. You can be able to do this through that way to several remote access to talk to each other through the cellular router and the VPN service. All the data being encrypted and sent out through the cellular signal over the internet to the other devices in the other end. And MileSite, finally, MileSite VPN offers those secure connections to the network edge. It is the VPN algorithm service. So you can install MileSite VPN either in the cloud or in the local server, uh, local server, on-premise server with Ubuntu operation. Uh, operating system. And we designed to be simple to set up, simple to configure, it, and simple to manage. So there are uh, two ways to install MileSite VPN. If you need to get more details, you can contact me or check from our website. And MileSite offers an uh, industrial grade light router series that is on. Um, Beatable, you know, uh, price. Um, and also, this light router series can be used uh, in the unbearable conditions like extreme temperature for very simple machine to machine applications, such as uh, um, just one SIM card uh, is used for backup when internet failed to work, so you can get enough degree of functionality, but at the most competitive price by the light series. That's the first series from our uh, cellular router portfolio. And next one is our Pro series that is designed for the smart city, smart corporate applications like video surveillance integration through the PoE interface and remote monitoring of IS232, IS485 connected devices through Modbus and SCADA protocols. 
if only 5G cellular network can meet your critical missions, and you are mindful of the high-speed data rate, if you are mindful of the low-latency communication, I think the last one, the Ultra Series, is is perfect for you. It's designed for the high-speed data rate but low-latency communication. And by the way, from the model's name, we can easily recognize how many Ethernet ports can be supported on each model. So you are 32, it means two Ethernet port. Uh, you are 35, it means five Ethernet, uh, fast Ethernet port. And you are 75, it means five gigabit, okay, gigabit Ethernet ports. And just go over a very quick part of the product uh, definition. Well, except, except the light series, that's, um, there's only one SIM card. There's no serial interface. Except that um, the rest, Pro and Ultra series, those two series do have the two SIM cards using the RJ45 along with S232, S485 serial connections, okay? However, the primary service is cellular data communication, and that supports both 3G and 4G LTE communications. The Ultra series can even support 5G network. And with dual SIM card supports, you have one, uh, you can have the, um, the redundancy, well, for example, if you need one SIM card from, from Verizon or another SIM card from AT&T, for example, and for whatever reason occurs, the failover from one network to another web network constantly, you know, give you the access to that remote internet connection. And of course, uh, as all mile site devices just are uh, uh, regularized, um, they are working um, very stable in the temperature range from minus 40 to plus 70 um, degrees Celsius. Okay. That's the uh, physical working environment for all of those three series of data. And with the small DIN rail form factor, so you can uh, flexibly install them through the DIN rail uh, installation kit. And, well, if you need more advantages, well, mile site routers have the device hub management platform in order to always give you the best connection and also has the VPN protocol support. Obviously, the IPsec and OpenVPN are the primary VPN protocols we can support. And also, we, we have the, um, uh, also the, PP2P, L2TP, DMVPN, and GRE as well. And as I mentioned, we need to worry about any unauthorized, unauthorized access of the cellular router. So no matter what kind of security protection it offers, it's very helpful. And it has built-in firewall management as well. It does have the web GUI interface as well as the SMS support. So you will be able to get the text message out of the mouse site router to your cellular or mobile phone. And of course, the legacy connectivity as we always have to work in this industrial environment. So we support IS-232 and IS-485, digital input, digital output, and mode bus. Um, and D DMP3 and several other legacy industrial internet protocols that are available in mile site um, louter series. Okay, I think that's the end of this um, webinar. So if you have any question, you can visit our website or you can send email to jessica at milesite.com. Guys, thanks very much for your time today. Hope to see you next time. See you next time. Bye-bye.